and here's a tip you can tell people at the farmers markets is um so i get there around eight i set up my booth you know i've typically got two tables and then i've got like a a, a, a these these wooden things that go down that kind of level up the the trays so they sit above the table then i have tablecloth mm -hmm. down under those under everything and uh then i just set all my trays down and i have trays underneath the table too all my extra trays and then as i go through these trays as i cut through them i just set them aside a pull from underneath and put new ones up there and then when people come up, I walk them through everything and I offer, if they, you know, if they seem like a buyer, then I say, you know, is, is there anything you want to try? And then when they try it, they're like sold, you know, and it, it makes it really easy. And then um, so I've got all my microgreens set out and then I've got uh, all my crops set out, too. So I've got like um, I've got like these boxes where I set all my salad mixes in the box. Then I have like these, these uh, circular containers. And that's where I set like, like my squash or my tomatoes or peppers, you know, kind of the bigger, the bigger stuff. Um, but I really, I'll, I bring whatever I can sell. So I'll sell all sort of sorts of mixed stuff. But primarily, I sell out of salad mixes, like, by if, if it starts at nine by 11 i'm out of all my salad mixes i'll bring like nine to nine to 12 salad mixes all right so i'm just getting everything set up here i got pepper squash today this is kind of how i set up all my microgreens i've got uh, all my trays out front here I've got signs that explain like how we grow you know we grow veganically no animal products no chemicals non-gmo follow me in the back i'll show you what else we've done bought some uh, green onions we'll sell these today got my salad mix mix of uh, lettuce sorrel and lamb's quarter Uh, New Zealand spinach. He's selling some of that. I've got some uh, some kale. I still got to get this going, but the kale. I've got some tomatoes. Tomatoes and more squash. Pretty radishes. Yeah, so this is kind of what I do in the morning. I get everything set up. So I just get everything set up for marketing. This is kind of what I thought. We sell in two ounce bags. So we'll like at, at the farmer's market, we'll, um, we'll bring the living plant. So I'll bring all my trays in my truck and I'll just set up all the trays at the, at the market. And then I just cut it for people right on the spot in front of them. And it's kind of like um, make your own mix sort of thing for five bucks. So we charge five bucks and then nice. people can pick whatever they want on the table. And then I just put it in a bag for them. And then I get to the two ounce number and then I give it to them. Have you given any thought to like uh, how much you're going to sell your greens for and stuff? I think I'm going to do probably for 2.5 ounce product, $5, and then just double that for five ounces. So five and five and 10. Okay. But I'm, you kind of got my wheels turning with the, uh, the samples <laughs> or, or not the samples, the mixes. So yeah, my yeah, first market is next weekend. Okay. What I noticed is people didn't just want one thing. 
they wanted a mix of a bunch of different things. So that could be something you might come up against where some people might like the idea of taking home a pad with the microgreens on it and then cutting it at home. But then there might be other people that like the idea of mix and matching where maybe you give them a little broccoli mm. and a little sunflower and a little peas all in one bag and they get you know a, a mix so they can try a little bit of everything. Um, so like my idea with that was I was gonna do my trays still, but then I, every market I was gonna bring a small amount of the take home trays. But then the obstacle I ran into was, what do you give them to take home the, the pad, you know, the coconut core pad with the greens on them? Have you figured that one out? Like packaging, do you mean? Yeah, do you, like, are you putting it in a plastic, little plastic package or are you giving them like well, a I'm tent? Using, I'm using a, uh, so the pad is five by seven and it just so happens that there's a company that creates, they call it a better box by okay. Sun Sugar Farms and they have exactly the same dimensions of the pad and it's cool. a box with the, it's like the perfect height too for the microgreens to, um, like the full length, I guess, or the fully grown <laughs> plant, I should say. And so that's just a cardboard box and it's pretty much, you just open it up and then you can harvest it that way. But I totally, I totally do feel that people are kind of used to just getting something ready to like, that's already cut and that's easy for them. <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely good to think about something to consider. Yeah, that, that's just one thing I observed during the market because, you know, we started with just sunflower and peas and that was it. But then people wanted to try other things. And that was just something that kept coming up every week was, you know, when are you going to have new, new, uh, new varieties? And then we slowly started introducing more stuff. All the stuff that we figured we wanted to grow was the stuff that from a health standpoint was the healthiest for that person. Right. So we went into medical medium and life changing mm -hmm. foods book in the microgreen section. And he kind of lays out some of the greens that you should be growing. So we started doing, we originally started with just sunflower and peas. Then we brought on fenugreek. Then we brought on uh, mm -hmm. bro broccoli. And now we're doing now the, like all the stuff I bring, I bring, uh, sunflower, peas, broccoli, kohlrabi, uh, fenugreek, uh, started doing cilantro, and then a new one we just started doing, which has been really popular, is uh, garlic chives. And that one, I I've been kind of surprised in how that one's taken off, but um, people have been really into that because you only need a little bit of the garlic chives and it goes a long way. So it's perfect for these little mix bags that I'm doing for people. Um, I just cut a little and then I throw it in the bag and then my trays don't go as quick. But what I, one thing I struggle with is with all the small stuff like the broccoli, the kohlrabi, the fenugreek, the garlic chives, you basically get two cuttings per tray. Oh, we do radish too. Radish is another popular one. Um, but you only get two cuttings per 1020 tray. So like you're bringing all these trays and you're only getting two cuttings off a tray. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? So we bring about 23 trays with us to market. You know, I just, I bring as much as, as much as I can. And, um, cause microgreens are mm -hmm. new. So whenever, like, uh, I love doing this with kids because when kids come up, they, they're so drawn to the greens because it's cool, right? You have these, these plants and they're looking at these plants and they're like, mom, what's, you know, what's this plant, right? So you cut them some greens, let the kid try it. And then the kid does all the selling for, for you because then he tries it and then he tells his mom, well, I want some of this. And then the mom or the dad buys it, for you, you know? Um, so yeah, cut samples if you can, like, 
here they tell us not to cut samples, but I still do it anyways. You know, it's, it's, I, I think it's, it, it sells people on your product. And then I, uh, and here's a tip you can tell people at the farmer's markets is um, when they get home, well, first we buy bags with holes in them and that's gonna allow airflow and cooling to take place. And they're gonna put these in their fridge. Well, when you put them in the fridge, there's still be moisture that collects. So tell them to take a paper towel and stick a paper towel in with their microgreens. That paper towel will suck up all the moisture. Nice. So then they just have to change out that paper towel, but their their greens will stay fresh longer. Because that was yeah. always a, a fear of mine, right? Like, what if I cut this for this person and only last two days? Well, my product's not going to look good, right? So I even have people that yeah. bring Tupperware and they'll line the bottom of the Tupperware with paper towels. I'll, I'll, um, you're going to want to get a scale and you're going to want to weigh all this stuff out for them on the spot. So you put all your microgreens in the Tupperware and then take a, another paper towel and they set it over the top. And then that sucks moisture from below and above and it makes it last even longer. Um, and what I notice is like some of the, the greens, they last uh, longer than others, like peas and sunflower. They last the longest. And then any of like the smaller stuff won't last as long. So the smaller the stem, the less it's going to last. Uh, but everything usually lasts over, over a week and a half, two weeks um, for the small stuff. And then at one of our grocery stores, we had a peas, a, a thing of peas on the guy's shelf for a month and uh, two, two weeks. So, <laughs> so the stuff does wow. last a, a pretty good amount of time. And the idea you're cutting it fresh in front of them, um, I think that goes a long way too. And, and you'll have to explain the difference between sprouts and microgreens to people because they'll, people will come up and say, well, I've sprouted sprouts in a jar. Are these the same things? And you, no, they're not. Sprouts, you know, you sprout them in four to seven days in a jar. You don't get the green, you know, the leaf, the more leaf you get, the more elevated biotics you get. With the sprouts mm -hmm. in the jar, I'm sure you get some elevated biotics, but you're not getting much of the leaf. And the leaf is where all that good stuff is. So um, that's probably something that will come up and you just, you know, you have an answer for everything, really. You, you, you basically want to leave them no reason not to buy from you. 